Shamai, if you've got one of these, an iPad, I'm going to show you how to make backing tracks really easily today. So it's not the first video I've done for iPad and ukulele because I've shown you how you can put digital music or your chord sheets and things onto your iPad rather than lugging loads of paper around. Um, but it dawned on me quite recently that some people don't know about GarageBand. It's a free app. It comes on your iPad or on your iPhone and it's pretty much the same on both. Um, but it's brilliant for making really quick, easy backing tracks. Uh, I saw a discussion quite recently on Facebook, I think, um, about using drum machines and metronomes and stuff. And it was mentioned on there as well, just how easy you can make a backing track. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible possible right it's going to be nice and short and very very basic so if you want to go and grab your ipads now quickly pause it and then i'm going to show you what to do i'm also using a slightly different uh, setup today if you've seen any of my live streams um there we are you can see a logo just appear in there so i'm actually recording this into ecamm live all right i'm not going live um but it makes life a little bit easier possibly anyway uh for using the ipad so we're going to see how that goes so if you notice anything slightly different this is going to drive some of you nuts okay i've got my sound effects that i've been using live don't worry i'm not going to go mad on them all right but that's what it is i'm using a bit of a different setup today so i'm going to do this for a moment and hopefully now you can see me still and my ipad okay so i'm looking for the little icon with the guitar on it for garage band all right you can see it there at the bottom of my screen if you don't have garage band on your ipad or iphone pop along to the app store it is all there for free and i promise you it really is worth it so i'm going to open up garage band all right your screen if you've never used garage band before is going to look a little bit empty all right compared to this but it's going to be exactly the same process we're going to do all right i'm going to press the plus sign at the top of the screen and it's going to give me some different um options as to what i want to start with okay and you can see a sound library keyboard drums amp that's for plugging your ukulele or bass or any other instrument directly uh, into here. We have got an audio recorder if you want to sing into it or play something acoustically. We've got some strings, we've got a bass, we've got a guitar, and we've got some world music, lots of different instruments. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to choose one of the instruments. Now, what I'm going to do, keeping this really simple, I'm going to make a backing track using the guitar option, pretending um, that it's your ukulele, if you like, and you can practice your bass ukuleles along to it. And I'm also going to do an option where we put a bass back in track in, so you can play along with your ukuleles as well. All right, so the first one I'm gonna choose is actually bass, as it's on there. So I'm gonna click on smart bass, that little icon in the bottom left of that square and that is going to open up there we go you can see it's it looks like a fretboard of a bass and if I was to play it right now um, all right all I'm actually doing there is pressing on the string okay now then let me just explain a few basics i'm not going to go into beginner's guide to garage band today i'm going to keep this quite specific all right so the first thing i want to point out is where it says liverpool and there's a little picture of a bass if i click on that i get a few options of different instruments so for example that was the liverpool bass sound a muted bass sound again just pressing the strings Okay, just to give you a little idea, and I can even scroll across, and there's an upright 
bass sound on there as well. And again, okay. Um, right, the next thing I'm going to look at, I'll keep it on upright just for a minute, is to the right of the screen you can see a little box that says chords and notes. At the moment on chords, hence why we've got these little tabs going across with the actual chord names on them. And if I click to notes, you can see basically that's the fingerboard of a bass. Okay, just to give a little idea. I'm not expecting anybody just to start playing it like that. At this point, if I click on upright again, that little icon with a picture of the instrument and go back to a different bass, let's try the P bass this time, you're gonna see suddenly frets appear, okay? All right, if you wanna play the open string, just to have an idea, there's our E string, you actually press it down on either the nut or the headstock. So those are our open strings. And then we can go. I think some of you are going to have fun already. Okay. But again, that's too complicated for what we are doing today. So I'm going to go back and press chords above where it says notes. And this time, there is that little dial with autoplay on it. And I can move that around. So if I go to number one, you can see now the frets and strings have disappeared. And I've just got the tabs there. And watch and listen what happens when I press, let's say, the C. I'm not doing anything other than pressing the tab to change the chord. And it's that simple, except for don't press something twice because it stops it, but you get the idea. There are different autoplays, and it's going to be entirely up to you. Have a mess around with these to get the different um, chord patterns I suppose you'd call them or the bass patterns in this case so that's the second autoplay I can change the chord trying to time it one two three four got that one better and then back to C okay and then to stop it you just press that tab again. All right, very quickly, autoplay three. Some different chords. You can see the tab as I'm pressing it because it's changing color. And you can even change the autoplay whilst it's playing. All right, you don't actually have to stop it and start it. Just to have an idea of the different patterns and shapes the bass line can play. Okay, so that's the basic layout. And what we are going to do now is record a little pattern just without bass. All right. Now, you may have noticed the first one I played then was actually a 12 bar blues. All right, but it wasn't 12 bars, but it was C, 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 F, F, C, C, G, F, C, C. All right. And I'll pop, there we are, there's the little actual thing of uh, the pattern of the 12 bar blues. Okay, so it's 12 bars. Now the reason I've chosen to do 12 bars is to show you something else. If you notice, towards the top of the page, there are uh, some numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and the smaller lines. They're indicating our bars or measures. Okay, and in this case at the minute, the default is eight bars and we went to 12. So let's work out how to do that. Very top right corner, we've got a little plus sign. If you click on that, 
you were going to see it says section A. Now let's just say you're doing, I don't know, a whole song and it's got an intro and a verse, one chorus, verse two, chorus and so on. You can set your sections up here. Today I'm keeping it really simple, but this is something else to learn in here. And remember with all technology, the best way of learning something is just to get stuck in. You're not going to break it. You can always go back or delete things, all right, but have a mess around with it. So in this case, I'm going to press the eight bars and I'm going to use the manual below and put it to number 12. So I've got a 12 bars, okay? I'm going to click off there and you can see now at the top of the page that has changed from eight bars to 12 bars to suit our 12 bar blues. Okay, so we're looking at our C, our F and our G and you might have already noticed on the actual screen, this one is in the key of C, okay? So I've got the main chords for C. I've got F, which is our fourth, G, which is our fifth, and then all the relative chords for the rest of the scale, E minor, A minor, D minor, and then over the other side, B flat and B dim. Don't panic if you don't understand what those mean, all right? If you wanna make a backing track going along to one of your songs, as long as you've got the chord chart on there, you can work it out. If you want to change the key, okay, you click on the settings, which is the little cog, all right, in the top right-hand corner, and you can see a load of preferences or options there. So if you wanna change the tempo, all right, you click on the tempo and you can go up or down. In other words, if you wanna make it faster or slower, I can click on the time signature to change that. It says key signature C major, all right? Again, I can change the key. If I wanna go into the key of D, you'll see now that the actual chords, all right, have changed. So suddenly my main chord there is my D with the G and the A. But no, we are keeping this simple. We are gonna go back to the key of C major. So I've got the right length of bars for what I want to do. I'm in the right key. I'm quite happy uh, with the tempo. If you wanna check the tempo, you can always just press play and you can hear the metronome go in. Okay, so the play button is the green triangle. The stop button is the white square. And if I want to rewind it back to the beginning of where I'm gonna to start to record in a moment, I click that back button. And you can see now my playhead has gone right the way back to the beginning of bar one. Okay, to record our bass line, I am going, let's just see first of all which bass that's okay. Maybe something a little bit less. Let's try number two. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, I quite like that. Okay, so that's the bass. Hang on. There we are. Press the tab to stop it. That's the bass pattern that I'm gonna go with, okay? So it's the red circle button to record and it always gives you a count in, all right? You can alter how long it counts in for and take it off. I think that's under the settings by here. Uh, let's have a little look. Time ruler, metronome and count in right at the top and it's telling me I've got a wood block counting me in and uh, the, what's it called? Metronome is working as well. Okay, so I'm gonna have four counts in before I have to press the C chord. However, you can actually press it beforehand so it starts recording actually at the beginning. Right, let's do that because I'm gonna press the record button to, and I pressed C, two, three, four, get ready for F, one, two, back to C, for two, then G for one, then F for one, then C for two. And now watch this at the end. 
Right, I didn't have to do anything then. It automatically loops itself. So it doesn't record over what you did at the beginning. Okay, so now I want to play back what I've recorded. I don't really want the metronome on, so I'm actually going to un tick that little blue triangle so that's gone white and play back what I've just recorded. Okay. And remember, so it's four C's, two F chords, two C chords, one G, one F, and then two C's to start, uh, to finish with. And it just keeps going round and round, okay? So, we've got our bass line recorded, okay? I want to add some rhythm or drums now, and this is where it gets really cool, because it is so easy, okay? So, if we look towards the top left-hand corner of the screen, we've got our return to home, the one that looks a bit like a page turned over. Then, we've got our big square, two little squares, and that's just taking us to the instrument, okay? We don't need that for a minute because we want to add another track. So the next box along looks like a bit like a square, but with broken up bits to it. We click on that, and suddenly that looks a lot more like um, different tracks on music software, all right? So you can see our bass line is still there. I can still press play, and you can see that playing at the moment but we want to add some drums to it, okay? So I'm going to, down the bottom on the left-hand corner, there's a plus sign. If I click plus, that takes us to our instrument page, and this is adding another instrument now. So this time, I'm scrolling through to where it says drummer. Now, I'm just double-checking, yeah, there, there are two options for drums. You can go in and actually make the drums yourself and you can use smart drums all right but in this case i want to try out the drummer one because i find that they sound better to be perfectly honest so i'm going to click on acoustic all right and straight away i really haven't had to do much it's come up with something already okay so if i was to press play right now I haven't done anything other than press drummer. That's it. Suddenly it sounds quite cool now without bass, doesn't it? And again, like when we're just listening to the bass, it just loops round and round. Now, if you think, oh, I quite like that, but it's, I want it less or more or louder or softer, on the left-hand side of the kit, you've got different options, okay? So say I wanted it more complex, but a little bit less, I'm just going to drag that yellow dot down a little bit and more towards complex and see what happens to the drum part. I think, oh, I like that, but it's a bit quiet. So I'm going to just pull it up a little bit so it's towards where it says loud. You get the idea, though. Okay, so what have we done so far? We've added basic drums, but it sounds brilliant because this is the beauty of GarageBand. It really does an awful lot for you. And we've got our bass line. So now I want to go back to that screen where I can see the different tracks again. Again, if you want to mess around with the drums, go for it. There's all sorts of things you can do. And if you do something and you think, mm, I don't really like that, there is a back button towards the top of the screen. Can you see that little arrow that faces back? I click back and you can see that it's changed it. But I quite like what I was doing earlier on, so I'm just going to pull it over complex, a little bit quieter, check once more.
All right, and even towards the bottom of the screen where it's got fills. Now, fills are the fancy bits in between the main beats. All right, but again, have a mess about with those. Right, I want to get back now to that screen where I can see my tracks. So I'm going to click the little square that looks up, and you can suddenly see we've got two tracks on there. We've got our top one, which is our bass, and we've got our drums below. Okay, and if you want to fast forward or get to a bit in it. The reason they're slightly different colour, all right, is just the drummer tends to come in eight bars, but it's, it's very intelligent. It sorts it all out for you, okay? And it just goes round and round on a loop. You've now got something where you know the chords, 12 bar blues in C, okay? So you could just strum along with your ukulele um, or even sort of um, improvise and do some finger style stuff over the top, all right? What I want to do now is I'm gonna add another part. I'm actually gonna add a guitar, all right? And then I can show you how to mute things and then eventually export it. So we've got our bass, we've got our drums. I'm gonna repeat the process. I'm gonna press that plus sign on the bottom left hand corner okay and I'm this time I'm scrolling along and I'm looking for my guitar now you could I'm just going back to this one for a minute you could plug in a guitar or a bass um, or even a ukulele in at this point and actually strum in something yourself and record it I will talk about that in another video okay so for today we're using all the smart instruments that are actually uh, comes with GarageBand. I've looked for the guitar one. I found that. I press on Smart Guitar. And again, it looks quite similar, doesn't it? Now, obviously, this is a guitar. I really wish they would do a ukulele one. We'll see, maybe one day. All right. Um, but all right, six strings, but it doesn't matter because we're not using the different strings. We're going to use the chord function again. But just to give an idea. <laughs> Okay, um, notes, exactly the same. Ooh, I'd forgotten you could do that. You can bend strings. All right, you can do brilliant things. So in this case, so I wanna go to chords and I'm gonna use autoplay again. So I'm just gonna keep it simple for a minute. All right, this is more to do with playing along with your bass this time rather than your ukulele. Go to F. All right, but this is where you can have some fun rather than having acoustic. Let's try uh, an electric one. Let's go Roots Rock. What does that one sound like? Okay. You can even put effects on. See, I've pressed the blue echo on and off. And we've got a choice of different chord patterns for the autoplay. fourth one okay so this time I'm gonna go through the whole process again remember now we're already set up for our 12 bars and it's gonna be four C's two F's two C's a G and F and a C again all right and we're gonna go through the same process at the moment I'm just gonna leave the bass and the drums playing playing along okay so i think let's just double check that my metronome actually this will be a good thing i'm going to press record yeah that that works but just to show you can you see there's just a little bit of green has appeared at the top of the screen now all right that's just shown it's recorded two bars i obviously want to do the whole thing so by pressing the back button that just disappears, okay? So we know we're, re we're ready to go, we're set up. 
I've rewound it back to the beginning. I'm not messing about with effects or anything now, but by pressing those different pedals, you can have some great fun. And I'm gonna get ready to do my 12 bar blues in C again. One, two, press in C, ready. Two, two, three, four, F now. One, two, back to C. One on G, one on F, then back to C. And that's it. Let's go and have a look at that on the main. So we go across the square with the bits. So maybe now you've recorded all three and you want to play your bass along. All right. So first of all, I need to select the bass line. Okay. If you double click on it, you will see um, some more options. Delete, duplicate, rename, merge, automation, showing grid and icons. We don't need to worry about that for now, but if you want to do any of those things, that's all you do is you press it twice. In this case, I want to alter uh, the volume of it. So I'm gonna click on there for the uh, track settings. And can you see on the left-hand side, about halfway down, you can almost see the headphones and mute, all right? Mute means it won't play. Let's take that off for a second. If I put the headphones on, it's soloing it. In other words, it only plays that, all right? And you can see the little headphones has turned yellow. So I want to mute it, take that off. So I'm gonna click on the little, it looks a bit like a mixer at the top. And suddenly now, I've got no bass playing. Okay, let's do the same. So this time, let's put the bass back in. Oh, that's annoying. That's me, it's not that, all right? So there you are, I've unmuted the bass. And this time, oh, in fact, you can even have it open. And I'm gonna click on the mute for the guitar line. Go like that. And we've lost our guitar now. We've just got our bass and drums playing. Okay, so suddenly, even if you've recorded all three, you can get rid of or mute one. You can have all three playing. That's it. Again, that's me. I'm clicking on the wrong bit of it. Click up there on the mixer and unmute it. Okay. Um, so we've got our three lines. The drummer, I tend to put in second. I just find that if I've put in some kind of chord structure worse, first, the drummer sort of lends itself or plays along better with something, all right? I'm sure you can probably go in and completely rearrange it anyway, but that's just the way I do it. So we've got our three different tracks, our bass at the top, our drums in the middle, and our guitar at the bottom. I can, I believe, pull them around. So there we are. I've now got the bass at the top. Let's pull the bass down one. So now I've got the guitar at the top, the bass, and then drums, and we now know if we just want to mute one or solo one, or even just turn the volume up or down in any of those tracks, you do it on that mixer. Okay, so how do I get this into an MP3 format so you can play it on your PC or play it on your phone or play it on any other device? Right, I'm going to do it as separate things, all right? In other words, I'll do it with just bass and then just guitar, but with drums with both. So the first job I want to do is export. Actually, before we do that, let's just show you how to save it, okay? So this is what we've been doing. And if I click in the top left corner on that little one that looks a bit like a sheet of paper, you can see today, it says my song 22, today 1712. I'm not sure why it says 17. 12, maybe that's the time I started it, I don't know. Anyway, I want to rename that so I know exactly what it is. Because as you can see here, sometimes I'll go My Song 21, there's a My Song 20 on there. So to rename it, I click where the actual um, title, the font is, and you can see I can alter it now. So I'm just going to go Blues, Backing, 
demo. And then because I've got all parts on there, that's what I'm just going to call it for now. Okay, for some reason it wants me to say demon. No, demo. All right, suddenly now I can find it again. That's your home screen. And the more things you record, the more things you mess around with, they will appear on there. So I need to click back my blues backing demo. All right, let's get rid of the guitar for a minute. So I click on my mixer and I mute that. No, I've done the wrong one. There we are. I've muted our guitar now. Just double check. Okay, right. I am now going to go back to our home screen where we've just come from. And so I've clicked on that little file thing. And if I click, where's it gone? And select, there we are, top right corner, there is uh, the word select. Click on that. And I want the blues back in demo. You can see a little circle has appeared. I've clicked on that. That is now selected. Bottom left corner, all right, you can see share. There are other words there, move, delete, more. We're not going into that today. We need to share. So I'm going to click share on here. And it gives me options, first of all, how I want to share it. If I was sending this as a complete GarageBand file to another Mac um, or another Apple device like a Mac Mini or a MacBook Pro, I would click on Project and I would save it and send it somewhere else. In this case, I just want to save it as a song file or an MP3. So I'm going to click on Song on the left-hand side of the screen and it's giving me loads of options at the minute going from low quality, medium quality, highest quality, and so on, all right? So below you can see artist, Rachel Webley, composer Rachel Webley, Rachel Webley's albums. I could choose a different picture there. I'm not worrying about that today because I'm keeping it very, very simple, okay? So I'm gonna go with highest quality for now, and I'm gonna click share. All right, and now it's given me options. What do I want to open it in? Do I want to save it to files? Do I want to email it to myself? Do I want to save it to Pinterest or save it to Dropbox? Okay, um, I could airdrop it at this point or I could save it in all sorts of places. Okay, in this case, just for now, I'm going to click on more. All right and I'm actually going to send it to myself. Now, I don't actually know how big this file is, but this is a good way of transferring something, either keeping it on your iPad or sending it to another computer. So you can see there now, I've clicked on send and it's saying export in song. What that's doing is turning it from a GarageBand file into an MP3, okay? There you are, you can see my email address coming up from there. I'm gonna click it, send to. I might as well send it back to myself. Okay. Click send. Not that big a file, so it obviously worked easily enough. Right, let's just check that it's worked. So I'm coming out of garage band for a minute. My watch has just said it's come through, so that's all good. Um, right, yeah, I'm, somebody pointed this out the other day, 15,599 unread emails. It's not, it's just I never open my emails that way on this iPad. So I'm just going into my emails for a minute. Uh, whilst I'm doing that, I'm just going to come out here because I have no idea what's on my emails. Um, not that I think there's anything rude, I just don't know. So I've had the email through to myself. Okay, there we are. You can see there, I've got my um, email open. It says demo M4A blues backing. Hopefully this is gonna work, but this I know will have been sent to my PC. It will have been sent to various devices. Fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, and it's playing. That's the backing track we just made, okay? So all I want to do now is come out of there for a moment. 
Uh, I'm going back into garage band. So we can go like that again. And this is where hopefully I'm, I won't be doing much editing because I'm doing all the swapping uh, on the uh, Mac straight away. So I'm going back to garage band for a moment. Click on my little guitar icon. Open up the file. Well, first of all, it's say done because at the moment it's selected. Click done. Blues back in demo. Go through the same process. So this time I want to unmute the guitar, but mute the bass. There we go. Right. So we're going to come back out to this. Okay. And I'm going to click select. I'm going to do one little thing just before I do this, just so I don't get confused because I get very confused very easily. This time I'm actually renaming the whole thing for now. I can always go back and change it again. So uh, we don't want bass. We want, uh, this is the guitar one. There we go. Right. So I want to select and share song. Highest quality. I'm pretty sure there's probably somewhere I can actually change the name of it, even if it's the other end. But this is just for me for now. So I'm going to click share and just do exactly the same process again. All right. Um, as I said, there are various places that you could uh, send it to. OK, but in this case, just to keep life very simple today, uh, I'm going to click on just curious. I should plan these a bit more. I'm just wondering if it'll send it straight to music. No, it'll send it to Dropbox. It'll send it to SoundCloud, I suppose. That's probably going to be uh, fine for some people. I'm going to email it to myself because by emailing it, you can have it on various places um, and you know that it can be saved that way as well. So I'm exporting my song. Do exactly the same thing again. This time, see, it actually says blues back in demo guitar for the file name. And I'll just put guitar this time. So I know. Click send. Wait for a little bit, actually. Have a swig of tea while that's sending. It doesn't take long. Okay, let's go and check my emails to make sure that one has come through. And of course, if you wanted to email yourself with more tracks on it, keeping the guitar or keeping the bass or keeping them, whatever. That is exactly the same process. So there's me. Oh, you need to see this. There's me, guitar coming through on everything. Let's just see if that works. Blues back in demo guitar. So no bass this time. Okay, so done. Yeah, we can come out of all of those for a moment. Right. Phew. Hopefully, I have no idea how long this is going to take. I, in my mind, I was thinking it was going to be really short, keeping it basic. But of course, nothing is ever that short when you're trying to keep things basic. So hopefully, what have we learned today? First of all, how to use GarageBand with our iPads. Secondly, how to produce a very simple backing track. This has been very, very simple. You can go and put layers and stuff. You can add as many instruments as you like. All right, just keep clicking that plus at the bottom. All right, and I will go into in more depth into more um, complicated or complex backing tracks one day as well. All right, so we've learned how to make a backing track for both practicing along with our ukulele and our bass ukulele. We've learned how to use the drummer feature. So these are all the smart instruments with GarageBand. We've learned how to save it all and we've learned how to export it um, as different versions of it using email in this case, keeping it nice and simple. OK, so first of all, please, 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 if you've enjoyed this, obviously give us a like and things. But if there's anything else you think, oh, I quite like that. Will you show us? Let me know below. 
all right? Because I haven't done much with Garage Band, mainly because I just didn't really think about it. And then I thought, well, actually, I use it all the time, okay? So let me know in the comments if there's anything else you want me to do, even if it's a help where to start with Garage Band. But I have covered some of the basics today. Okay, I do hope this has helped. I do hope you've enjoyed it. As always, if you've got a comment or a question, please feel free, leave it below. Give us a like if you've enjoyed and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos. Thank you for watching.